What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Michael Knapp Fishing. Today we're going to be talking about Texas rigs and a question that I got asked a lot on my Instagram when I posted a picture. Um, I wasn't really aware that people didn't do this. Um, I know a lot of the pros do, but I guess not everybody does. So we're going to talk about it today. To bead or not to bead? Everybody sees that little red bead in there. A lot of people are like, well, why do you do that? What's that for? So that's what we're going to talk about today, guys. All right, y'all. So if you've been in bass fishing for any amount of time, you know what a Texas rig is. Everybody knows what a Texas rig is. But just in case we do have some new viewers, I'm just going to show you real quick. All a Texas rig is is a bullet weight of some kind, any weight, I prefer a 3 8 most of the time, with a hook, like so. Tie your favorite knot on it, and then you have a free floating uh, bullet weight down to your soft plastic. And this is a traditional Texas rig. Now, I posted a um, Exxon Lures Brush Hog or uh, MB Hog Hunter on my Instagram page and I can't even begin to tell you how many people messaged me or like why do you put a bead on it what's that bead for okay so we're gonna talk about it so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how I rig up my Texas rig I put the weight on first just as everybody else does but then I follow it up with a glass bead you can buy these at, you know, craft stores, Tackle Warehouse has them. You can buy them anywhere, really. So then I put the bead on after the weight, and then, of course, we go with the hook that I just dropped. And hook on. I'm just going to go ahead and tie it up real quick because I needed to tie it on anyway. Your favorite knot, whatever it may be. Um, I use the, uh, actually, I really don't even know what this knot's called, to be completely honest. Wet it down. Cut the tag end. Okay. So there is my compact rig. It's the Texas rig. It, it's, you know, it, it's what everybody uses. It's the bullet weight, the hook. I just add in the additional step of the bead. Now, why do I put the bead in there? I have many reasons for why I put the bead in there. But the number one reason why, that the reason above most is because tungsten is so dense. It is a very, very hard metal, and it's not easy on your knots. So I put the bead on there to protect my knot. That is the number one priority to me, is protecting that knot. So that bead comes, and it can actually sit on top of that knot, as you see, and it'll actually sit there a little bit sometimes. But that weight is only hitting that bead. It is no longer hitting my knot, and going to cause catastrophic failure if for whatever reason that tungsten were to get a little bit of a sharp edge or something like that it will cut fluorocarbon guys i've seen it cut braid so that's what the bead is for me number one number two the bead gives sound you hear it it gives a nice little bit of sound out of it and you know it's something that not a lot of people do apparently that i didn't know that um, but if it's something that not a lot of people do, I'm always looking for that little bit of a difference, just that little bit of an advantage over anybody else of something that I can use to my advantage out on the water. And if it's that little bit of a clicking sound, well, absolutely, I'm going to use it to my advantage. Now, a lot of people also ask, why red? Well, why'd you use red hooks? Everybody remembers when the red hooks became this big phenomenon that they're going to catch more fish and all that jazz. Um, I personally didn't buy into it. Um, I, I still don't buy into it. I still don't use red hooks. But when I'm using the beads, I always go with a red bead. Um, and it, it has, this is just a side note, it has nothing to do with the actual technique or anything. Do I know if this is 100% true? No, I do not. This is just what I believe and what um, 
the reason, one of the reasons why I do it. The red is just going to show off a little bit of uh, maybe blood, maybe an injury, maybe a gill, whatever you're trying to replicate. Look at your, your baits. It always has a little bit of red on it. Uh, all of your bait fish, I got a little bit of red in the gills. If it's injured, it's got a little bit of blood. That's all it really is. It's not a whole lot of red, but it's just a side note, something a little extra that, you know, it might help, it might not. I don't really care either way because like I said, all it's doing is protecting my knot. That's the number one reason, it's protecting my knot. And as you can see, you know, I've got, there's one, there's two, there's three, you know, I always, always run that bead. So a lot of people, the other question I get asked a lot from a lot of people is, does the bead cause you to get hung up more? No, no it doesn't. No more so than what the, the actual weight itself is going to get hung up. Um, let me put a bait on this real quick and I will demonstrate. This is the uh, Exxon MB Hog Hunter that I was talking about. I'll just rig that on there right quick. Oh, I pulled it through too far. All right, so as you're throwing this rig, this, this is my Texas rig, this is what I throw, well, not always is plastic, but a lot of the time this is what I throw. So the plastic itself is going to fall in, the weight is gonna fall first, and then the plastic is gonna follow behind it. So this weight is going over all kinds of branches, over rock, over whatever you're targeting. So the bullet weight itself is more or less your bulldozer. And as it comes through, if, if my finger is the log, it's just gonna come through and it's gonna still pull over it. Now, once it gets to that bead, it's not gonna like separate or anything. I'm really bad at this today. This, the, the weight and the bead aren't going to separate a whole heck of a lot. Now, they'll separate a little bit if that bead wants to stay up on the knot, but the bead itself is still rounded, so it's still not going to go anywhere. It's, it's not going to get hung on anything. That's not, it's not big enough to really matter. Now, it, you know, it can get hung up in rocks and stuff, but the bullet weight's going to get hung up in there too. You know, if the bead gets hung, the bullet weight is hung is more or less what I'm trying to get at. Um, it's still, in, <clears throat> it's still incredibly um, weedless. Um, it comes through rock, it comes through brush, it comes through everything just fine, no problem, no questions asked. Um, I'm, I'll actually put up a video right now of this is me fishing a Texas rig on Cherokee Lake and you see what I'm fishing, I'm fishing um, this lay down and I'm just bringing it over the, um, over the branches and over the limbs and stuff and as you can see it's coming through there perfectly and if you watch you can actually see my real tick <laughs> when I get that bite. So um, anyway, that's the only fishing clip gonna be in this video, guys, sorry. Um, it's, the weather's been terrible, so I haven't really gotten to go out and film very much on the water. But guys, that is the bead or not to bead question. That is what everybody asks me, and I bead. I always have a bead in mind. The only time I don't bead is if we are fishing a Texas rig in sub 50 degree weather. Um, then I won't bead. Um, it does expose my knot a little bit more, but I don't want that sound so much when the water temperatures are super cold and everything's really lethargic, so I don't really do it then. But I don't really Texas rig a lot during the winter either. So 99% of the time, I'm going to have a bead on my Texas rig. Guys, I hope this helped you all out. I hope this gave you all a little bit of insight as to why I put a bead on there because I know I threw a lot of people off on my Instagram. Um, I was very surprised by that. Um, but, you know, this is what I do, this is why I do it, this is how I do it. If you guys like these videos, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it, guys. Leave me a comment down in the comment section below. Let me know if there's anything else you want to hear me talk about as far as tips go, as to why I do what I do, with some of the crazy things that I do, because I do some crazy things and I catch fish on them. Guys, I really appreciate it. Take care. I'll see y'all out on the water.